wanted to go back to, to the room. Oh. So maybe I should say something about this session without destroying everything. Uh, the original title of this session was Why Federation Suck? And then I was not allowed to use the title because Serena felt that we have to stop, we have to put an end to the series Why Something Suck Sucks. But um, despite the title, this is a very positive session. I think that in the moment in which uh, one starts looking at the things that can be improved, in a product, in a software, in a way of doing things, that, that means that that product is being, is being successful. Otherwise, you will be busy trying to deploy that. As probably it has been said in many other sessions before me, Federation have been successful. However, there are, there are still things in, that can be improved, particular from the service point of view. So I try to get together some examples of where things could be better. Um, I think it will be up to you at the end of the session to judge who is going to be the good, who is, been to, who is going to be the ugly, and who is be going to be the bad. The first uh, speaker is Marco Fargetta. He's an Italian and he's an engineer working for NFN, not University of Catania. Um, he's been involved in several grid projects, and particularly in the last two years, he has been involved in uh, science gateway, gateways. And what he's going to tell us are the issues to uh, bring these gateways within the federation, starting with EDEM, that's the Italian federation, and then within EDUGAIN. Thanks, Lisa. Hello to everyone. Okay, so in my presentation, as um, Luis introduced, I will talk about the activity we are doing, trying to um, allow people to access any infrastructure using Science Gateway and log in to Science Gateway using Identity Federated. So that's a brief introduction about the infrastructure. When we talk about infrastructure, we are talking about grid computing. And grid computing is just a, set, a large set of computer facilities spread around the world that the user can access remotely. Uh, this is a very nice idea in the, re in the um, research area because uh, in many fields there is an uh, increasing request of large computational facilities, but the grid adoption is limited by some barriers. In particular, we have the unfriendly interface, difficult to use in the beginning, lack of standard uptake, and, and so on and so forth. So what, uh, so people are, even they know the grid can help on their work, they are frustrating to use it because they have to write JDL scripts, uh, they have to change something in the application, they have to use command line interface they are not used to, and they have to follow a, um, complex security procedure to access those resources. This makes people, non it experts, away from the grid computing. Uh, we know there, are, there have been many projects trying to improve the user interface and the way that people can interact with the grid, but uh, until now they have not reached a, a good uh, success. So in the last period, in the last couple of years, there are a new idea on developing grid portal. These are uh, community driven portals where the idea is not to create a portal to access the grid as itself, but is to ask community what kind of application they want to use on grid and create a portal just to run this kind of application using all the tools grid provides to the users. Uh, this is what we call Science Gateway. In more details, the um, this is a high-level architecture of the Science Gateway that is just a portal which embeds different applications uh, defined by the community. And when the user access the Science Gateway, it can execute only the application we provide because they are the application they need. So um, in this way, we can simplify the grid interaction to the user because it's the portal who manages everything. And you have to know nothing. Of course, the user using the application are in the same communities, uh, but they come from different organizations. When you have to submit the 
applications to the grid, you have to satisfy the security requirements for, for grid. And this security requirement is quite strong. It is based on certificate, on certificate related by um, uh, trusted certification authority. Uh, there are a lot of steps to create proxy certificate and so on. This is requested because of the um, resource owner want to be sure with using the resources. And what we found with the communities is that this uh, strong security is one of the biggest problems to keep users away from grid. So um, we want to change this mechanism. Of course, we can do this because according to the grid uh, uh, policies, the portal can be responsible for the user authentication. So uh, on the grid side, you have to uh, access with the certificate, but if you use a portal, the portal can use a certificate for all the users. This is possible only if, if the portal uh, do not allow the, uh, to run any kind of application, but a uh, fixed set of application were controlled, and the user cannot uh, create damage on the resources, because the user cannot run an application or cannot store any kind of file or cannot do operational difference from what the portal assert. So using this, this approach, we try to create a, a simple access to the e infrastructure for the community in order to run this set application or they require. So uh, instead of use grid certificate, we think that uh, uh, for the portal, the Identity Federation could, bro could provide the requested security because the, uh, according to some level of uh, assurance they, should, they have to provide, we can identify, the portal can identify the users who want to access the grid. And this is enough for the portal um, manager in order to run application on grid. However, since the distributed nature of grid and of the user, we cannot use just one federation because of the uh, currently they are all country limited, or even in the case of Edugain, there are many counties not involved in Edugain, so we have to um, use different federation and other identity sources. And we decided to use the social network to identify users. Of course, the federation and the social network are not at the same level of trust inside the portal. So when the user comes from a trusted uh, IDP, we can assert the, the identity, identity of the user. But if the user comes from uh, a social network, we need to identify the person. Uh, currently, we identify in person. I mean, we have to know who is the one who are trying to access. Someone from the community should, uh, say, uh, should know the person who are trying to access, and so on. So we are sure that people trying to access from the Identity Federation are trusted people. The um, sense gate we've implemented for the security part is uh, based on Shiba service provider. Whereas the sense gateway use the life portal application framework. This is a Java portal. Uh, we try to uh, implement the um, mechanism to allow the shibboleth information, uh, the sample information to go to the life frame in order to authenticate, authenticate people. We use the mail attribute to authenticate because the life um, could authenticate people by mail. Uh, we have no other option. Uh, Anyway, in this, in this case, we can associate identity uh, coming from uh, IDP to the life, uh, local life ray user through the email attribute. Uh, when the user log in to the, um, our uh, service provider, uh, is authenticated, but of course, it is, uh, the user is not authorized to run application grid. What the user has to do is to ask for authorization. At the current moment, we have only the authentication mechanism implemented with the Shibboleth, and the user has to ask for authorization to the service provider, who is the responsible for the application to run on grid. Uh, we are now investigating the possibility to use uh, some SAMO attributes in order to create uh, the, um, 
the, the local user on the live array in order to authentic authenticate and authorize this user. But uh, we are find some problem. We will discuss later. And of course, this approach is not general for the moment because we found some community who wouldn't allow an um, automatic mechanism in order to authorize users, especially for the science gateway uh, on the, um, for medical applications because they have a lot of complaint about uh, authorization security, so they wouldn't allow an automatic authorization of the users in the science gateway. So this is how our system works. When the user goes to the live ray, he is ready to IDP. This is normal. Then the IDP returns with the attribute. Uh, live ray will use the mail to authenticate the user, but in the live ray uh, database, the user can have only one mail. Uh, in the uh, IDP, the user can have um, multiple mail. So we need an external database. We use LDAP to maintain information about the list of mail of the user and which mail is registered in the life ray, uh, plus other information about the role, the authorization, and so on. We put everything in life ray in, in, in LDAP, and this LDAP is synchronized with life ray. So when the IDP provides the, the list of mail, we can identify in the LDAP server which is the user, uh, which is the authorization of these users. Then. After the authentication, and if the user is authorized, the user can run application on grid. And to run application on grid through the science gateway, the, the portal needs to have a certificate. We use a robot proxy certificate. It's a special kind of uh, certificate genera generated on the fly just for the application. So moving to the topic of this session, what did we find useful on the, uh, what we found to need some improvement of the federation. Uh, first of all, for the good part, uh, we found um, identity federation very simple for the user because they are used to use identity federation in their institution. So they are, they are happy to maintain the same authentication mechanism for all their, all their activities. However, we have some problem with the authorization. And we miss some features we have on grid and we would have also on the federation. I will go more deeply on these two points. The first point is the multiple identities. In the previous session, many speakers uh, present the same problem. Uh, we use identity federation, we use a social network. Uh, we found user have account on social network different identity provider because they can work with the multiple organization. But in many cases, we want to maintain a single user in our database. We, we found this a problem because there is no um, support on the SAM in order to identify the users in an independent way of the IDP or the identity used to access. Actually, we implement a system to uh, com cope with this problem, and this is based on the mail list. Because, as I said, the IDP will provide a list of mail. Each IDP we use provides some mail, even Facebook or Google and so on. In the account, we can register all this mail with the user. So when it try the user try to authenticate in the sense gateway, we check the mail yeah, the IDP is providing, and we will try to find the user in the LDAP server. And since the user in the LDAP server has a multiple list of mail, we can ident identify the user independently from the uh, IDP e user is using at that moment. However, we think this is just a workaround of the problem, but uh, it will be useful if we have uh, something provided by the IDP in order to identify in a, the, the user in a way not related to the IDP, but in a global way for all IDP. The second problem we found during the development of the Sense Gateway is the way we have to test the IDP. I mean, we joined different federation. We asked to the federation to, we request to uh, the IDP in the Federation to release mail. 
but some IDP were some IDP were not providing the mail or they had some configuration problem with our ISP. But we have not the account or any way to test the IDP. So what happened is that user uh, rediscovered that IDP was not working. When the user tried to authenticate, he get an error on our ISP, he write a mail, I cannot access. What happened? We have to check, understand which IDP, go to the IDP, ask why the configuration is wrong, they fix, they do a lot of tests, but it's IDP based. based. We would some system in order to check all IDP during the configuration of the service provider. I saw this morning uh, something about the opposite direction. From the IDP, you can check all the SP, SP metadata. It's tool developed by Chant, but we would the opposite, because from the SP side, we would check the IDP metadata. Other problem we found with the authorization is the semantic of the attributes describing the user. Because we found many IDP in many federations have attributes to describe the position of people inside the organization. But since we developed Science Gateway for communities, and the communities are defined by the subject, we would know if the people is working on the subject. Because grid resources are very are many, but are limited. So we would give, for example, some priority to the people working on the subject. So, uh, there is no way, at least in the IDP we are working with, there is no way to understand if the user is working on a specific subject or is on a community or whatever at the moment. Another important problem limiting our approach is the delegation of the user authentication. As I said before, the SP, the, the sense, our sense gateway, provides the user with the, a set of applications. We deploy the application inside our sense gateway in order to run on the e infrastructure. But some community have applications that cannot be deployed in our infrastructure, but they have to manage the application and uh, allow people to access the, the application using, uh, using some assertion. However, we need to allow user to access this application, not from the browser, so user going to the, direct to the application, but from the services, because we want to implement some workflow, so it's the service well, that is responsible for, to communicate with the other service provider, who is, respond, who is provide some REST API. So it would the mechanism for the server to access the other service provider on behalf of the users. And this is a very important problem because we have a lot of application in this, with this problem. Uh, we are trying to uh, see what authentication system to use instead of SAML, but uh, if there is a system to communicate this, to delegate the authorization, it would be easier for us to implement this solution. Uh, we are trying also to develop the iPad interface for some science gateway. We found this not easy. Uh, we know there are some uh, tools like Moonshot to allow application development, SAMLC, but they are not easy to use. Now we have done something on the iPad, but it, it, it was very complex compared to the web applications. So just to give some number of what we have, we have done. We have developed 14 science gateway. This is the list, they are linked so you can go and check. Many of them are under development, other are in production, but the majority are under development. They use all the same procedure, just use uh, to go to the science gateway. Uh, the user can authenticate with the identity federation, then have us to register in order to provide some authorization. A run the application. Of course, we can add uh, application according to the request coming from the community. This is the distribution of uh, users, uh, the distribution of organization using the sense gateway, and the user come from this organization. As you can see, they are spread around the world. This is the reason why we use so many federations and uh, different sources, because not all the countries have national federation at the moment. 
especially in South America and Africa, they have no federation at all, so there is no way to use identity federation with them. And we need other sources for that identity. This is just a number. We start to, from very short time, so what is more than that, we are increasing the number very fast, and we hope to this increase more faster in the future when the, they come ready. This is some, just some comments we get from the community. Uh, the community are generally made by projects, so we ask to the project representative some information, uh, what they think about the authentication system we use with the Identity Federation, especially compared to the previous one based on certificate and so on. Uh, it seems they are happy with this solution. Uh, we are proud to continue with this approach because uh, users feel this system more easier to use uh, they start to use more often. So what we learn, okay, just last two slides. <laughs> no. What we learn for the presentation is uh, that um, uh, the identity federation are ready for web application. They are very easy to implement. The learning curve is quite steep at the in initially, but then you are, you can build a very good system, very secure in a very easy way and very easy to maintain. But in the, if you want to use the identity federation in different contexts, like mobile application, or you want to implement some delegation or some more complex mechanism, this is not trivial or almost impossible, I would say, because it's very complicated. What we are doing now is to improve the uh, mobile application of the Science Gateway maybe integrating uh, other technology because the solution we have now is a mix between a mobile appli native application and a web application, but we would have a totally native application. And we would all, uh, investigate more about the authorization using some attributes, maybe creating the, some VO, using some VO manager tools, like in some federation I know they are using VO manager to create community for their authorization mechanism. Okay, I would thank the people involved in, in this activity. They are from different organizations who are helping us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Very nice presentation. Are there questions? No questions? So. I have a question, no, but I'll no, there's a oh, question. You again. Uh, thank you for your presentation. You showed us that you do account mapping, mapping federated accounts onto Google accounts and stuff. Um, and at some point, you um, you give authorization permissions based on the accounts of the users. Aren't you worried that at some point um, I may log in first with my federated account, then with my Google account, and then at some point my Google account gets hacked? Um, but you gave me authorization bo uh, on both. Have you anything to mitigate that? <laughs> but currently I would say that my IDP using username and password is almost the same as Google. So I was wondering about the hacking of both. Is uh, at the same level? in terms of account, uh, hacking, because if the IDP is username and password, I don't know why Google is weak compared to the IDP. Well, perhaps because the fact that the email address that the password reset was sent to is verified to be owned by the institution and not by Google, for which you actually don't know who that is? I don't know. Anyway, in our case, since the user can perform a very limited set of task on the grid, it cannot create damage. What we do is we check, uh, we, we have some quotes or some limits on what the user can do and how many applications can run and so on. We can check the limits. If the, we see some strange behavior, we uh, stop the authorization. This is what we do for the moment. Anyway, but uh, for the hacking problem, for we know Okay, Google is not the same as IDP maybe, but uh, since they use the same system, we, are, we use the same approach for both. Okay, thank you. 
Yes. Okay. 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 The next talk is going to be a joint, shared set of slides, and it's going to be provided by uh, Tice Kinkors and uh, Dick Fisser. They are both CISA admins. They are both Dutch, and they have both dealt with some issues like, "Oh, this doesn't work. Your service is not working." Uh, Thais particularly will talk about his experience in uh, providing the TCS portal, which is a, a federated portal accessed by a number of federations. And Dick will um, report on the terrain experience in offering some simple, we thought, services um, for, for, for the community. And this means for multiple federations. Um. Yes. Okay, thank you, Alicia. Um, well, uh, we're going to have a, a presentation in two parts. Um, maybe uh, we merge our presentations because they touch quite on the same issues. We didn't want to duplicate anything and we wanted to ensure because it's the last presentation of the day that it uh, at least doesn't overrun any time. Well, my name is uh, Thijs Ginkos. I work at Tilburg University and there uh, I maintain. Uh, oh, well, we have two parts. Uh, there I maintain a service which I guess is mo uh, known to many of you in the community. It's called the uh, TCS Personal Certificate Portal. Uh, the, the TCS service, the certificate service, is probably most known for the server certificates. But we also have a uh, service for uh, getting personal SSL certificates. The idea is, and this is where federations come in, it's um, your home uh, institution sets an attribute which certifies a very special defined attribute that certifies that you have at one time been photo identified. And this attribute is relayed through the federation to us. Uh, well, we, we of course can check the uh, attribute and we uh, then use the Komodo uh, API to issue you a personal certificate. And this whole process for a user should be in the order of two, two minutes. Um, the federations are uh, an essential part of the service because we, it, it it, it's really an enabling device because it an allows us to get a, uh, a cryptographically a, a certain way to, uh, for an institution to uh, express this attribute about the user. And that is important for the, uh, for the process. Um, we have two variants, one for, uh, for e-science, that's uh, for grid usage, which have their own community of uh, allowed, uh, allowed CAs and uh, one regular for as email, as mime, and the likes. Uh, we connected 10 NRANs across Europe now. Um, so we had quite some experience in uh, connecting different uh, federations, and that's what the remainder of this talk is about. If you want to know more about the service, what this talk is not about, then you can uh, go to uh, Kevin's uh, website. Well, what, what problems did we encounter in, uh, in connecting these 10 different federations to our, uh, to our uh, portal? Um, the basic, well, it's really rather basic. Users do not understand federations at all. Well, that's even more technical users. Um, as long as everything goes well, they understand it because, well, then you don't really notice anything. But as soon as uh, something breaks down, it's, they really have no clue that someone is relaying something to someone, that we are someone else than their uh, ho home IDP. It's really, uh, well, for us, it, this all may be very evident. Uh, but to the average user, this, this is not not as evident at all. And we are having quite some trouble to get people to uh, go to the right places with their, uh, uh, the people that can actually solve their problems. Um, a, bit, a bit less uh, generic is that users do not know what an, uh, who their NREN is. Uh, so they see a name uh, uh, Surfnet in our, in our Netherlands case. And this, again, is very obvious for us what Surfnet is and what it does. Uh, but many users, well, they haven't heard of the name, but yeah, it's, it's something like an ISP, and uh, what do I have to do with this? Um, and, or they, they don't even know yeah, what an NRAN is, what it actually does. Um, and this all makes that the, uh, the discovery and the where are you from experience really differs, uh, and this hasn't really been solved yet, I guess. I hope it gets solved at some point in the future. Uh, that it's, uh, it varies wildly per SP, so there's also no, not a, well, perhaps I can just show uh, something. Uh, here's, this is not our service, but another service. 
Um, at the surface, this user wants to log in and it's presented with this screen. Uh, it's, I think the same screen was presented in yesterday, uh, yesterday morning's uh, plenary session. Um, the average user really, well, he just starts to type his university username and password in the, in the login box, I guess. He doesn't know what Athens is or uh, what link or what remote access activation could possibly mean, uh, nor do I. Um, they really uh, have no clue, and once they find out, they click on institution login, which is the correct thing to do. They are presented with a list of NREN names, which they also cannot really relate to their, uh, to their university. Uh, this is another service provider, which yeah, provides an extremely long list of all universities connected. So this is, and the, the experience is, looks completely different. Well, our experience, of course, looks also completely different, because every service provider has, has a different uh, discovery. We've, we have quite some, a bit of more success with our approach, uh, mainly on the uh, universally possible, but yeah, the basic is we just present a map of Europe, and that people seem to understand. You just can click your country. This I've uh, selected a Nordic country. Uh, if you click this, you get just the uh, IDPs, and that are university names, so they may be uh, more recognizable for people of the of the Sweden uh, of the Swedish IDPs. Uh, an alternative we uh, uh, also employ is that NRANs can make a personal URL, which goes to the same software. But the software, in the software you configure, oh, this is this NREN, the one on the bottom is from a country uh, uh, which used to be the Netherlands. Uh, and uh, when you go, you go there, uh, it, it, detects, uh, it detects the URL and it does nothing more, uh, in the software it does nothing different except just pre-selects uh, the Belgian uh, IDPs and, uh, well, actually redirects you to the Belgian wave. Uh, so uh, NRANs and their uh, institution can, use, can communicate this URL and not the generic pan-European URL, which already has at least some advantages. It's not perfect, but, uh, well, at least this works a bit better for us. Perhaps if you want to scale it up to the world, yeah, then, again, of course, yeah, if you want to click Luxembourg, then it's, uh, it gets really hard. Well, um, basically the real problem we had, at we were connecting 10 different uh, federations, is that every federation has, well, works differently. We had 10 different uh, modes of operation, well, more or less. Uh, they have dis different attributes, of course, different and the encoding uh, differs, some uh, do base, base 64 encoding, some don't. Uh, last week uh, we had the case yeah, that, that one federation requires base 64 encoding and the others don't, and this, yeah, of course, such exceptions are easily to, easy to overlook, uh, or even attribute semantics. Uh, we have to deal with different protocols. You would say that SAML2 is uh, ubiquitous uh, right now, but it's not. We still have to, uh, to support the 1.3 because, yeah, there are still many IDPs, and, well, many, there's, there's still significant, uh, enough IDPs to uh, require to still support it. There are differences in bureaucracy, but luckily that's mostly not handled by me. So, uh, but, but still, it, uh, the, the process of getting signed up, get, or, or, but also getting at IDPs to release attributes is different. Uh, I think diff Dick is also getting, uh, getting a bit more into that point. Uh, the level of knowledge really is uh, really uh, uh, different between, uh, well, not between federations, because all federations are really run by, uh, uh, well, really knowledgeable people, but especially on the IDP level. And one problem is that you, even though we are a service provider, we should be dealing with federations. We are very often dealing with individual IDPs, um, because the, feder yeah, the, the federations are just a relaying partner, and uh, we communicate directly with them, but yeah, there are many IDPs who, who do not understand what, uh, do not understand the deeper things that they understand in general, of course, what they're doing, but as soon as things break down, uh, that's also a, a problem. And uh, we, what we're really seeing is a different model, of course, between the two, two kinds of federations. Uh, we have a, a hub and spoke model on the one side, or a distrib more distributed model on the other side. A hub and spoke model is a federation which has a single endpoint with, where we can connect to and where our IDPs are hiding behind. Uh, or a federation is, well, just a collection of, meta of, of IDPs, and the IDPs can uh, connect directly to us. Well, the, uh, the, different, the hub and spoke model, that really makes sense from us, uh, for us from the SP perspective. I'm, uh, surely there are uh, advantages and disadvantages if you're running it, you're running the federation. But for us an, as an SP, it, it really solves ki uh, quite a lot of the problems we have with the 
uh, more distributed federations, and uh, the, fe the federations with a single endpoint are, yeah, for us, the, the, easy, the easy cases. Um, and it abstracts away all kinds of imp imp what are, for us, implementation details. We just want to authenticate users to our service. Um, and, well, if something happens within the federation, uh, I think it's not, it should not be our concern. Uh, but it, it is if the federation is not uh, providing a single endpoint. Uh, federations uh, add IDPs, remove IDPs. Um, federation, uh, federation with a single endpoint can also do uh, protocol translation, which is really useful. So we, in the Netherlands, everyone still uses a select. Uh, but that's not our portal doesn't have to use a select because this single endpoint abstract this uh, away for us. Uh, we also had to deal with IDPs transitioning, changing their entity ID. Um, well, because some federations have hundreds of IDPs, so if we scale up to 10 NRANs at this point, point already, we have thousands of IDPs connected. So every, yeah, there will be multiple changes uh, per month. And uh, uh, it would really help us if this, this could be more abstracted away. Uh, attribute translation is something that uh, uh, such, an, uh, such a federation could do, so we can have a unified uh, view of the, of the attributes even access control, and uh, of course it can, it provides an abstraction layer between us and the, the, the individual IDPs, which uh, perhaps can alleviate uh, knowledge level differences, and the federation is of course closer to the IDP uh, administrators, so perhaps that also helps to uh, cooperate. If I have to talk with someone who is on the other side of Europe, um, well, of course we have email, but uh, it helps if you know the people, if they're on the same, in the same end. So for us, a hub and spoke model is really what we want, uh, but we don't get we don't get it for many uh, federations, unfortunately. But uh, it would really help us, and I think it's yeah. In the in the software engineering world, it's uh, rather normal that you abstract away all these implementation differences, and I hope it gets uh, more normal in this uh, in the federation uh, sphere. And now I think I'll hand it over to Dick. After the hand is over as well. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Dick Fischer. I work at the Trainer Secretariat. I'm the Network and System Administrator. And yeah, I think most of you have interacted with me either to file complaints um, about, <laughs> or mostly to file complaints. Uh, we operate a SAML server provider. Um, it started out a couple of years ago with um, only a handful of uh, directly connected IDPs. Um, that became more and more, and ultimately we uh, became part of federations, starting with Surf Federati, and then uh, more and more and more uh, got connected. We have the model of a, um, a single service provider that uh, hides uh, stuff that's behind it. Uh, we did it because we expected uh, we started out with one service, and then we wanted to be able to add on stuff uh, as we went on without having uh, extra administration overhead. Um, the most uh, prominent example is the website of, the, uh, of this conference, of this very conference. This is a schematic representation. Uh, the SAML proxy is a uh, simple SAML PHP instance that connects the, four, the now four uh, different services. Um, the, others, uh, the left side are the identity providers, the blue ones are the federations grouped in, uh, yeah, that's the cloud things. The yellow ones are the uh, uh, bilateral connected uh, IDPs, uh, including our own. We also operate a, an extra instance that uh, acts as a bridge for uh, non-SAML stuff, such as most of the uh, social networks. So this covers, yeah, this covers most of the identity providers. Uh, the thing we have seen, um, it's the same uh, as Thaisa mentioned, uh, the legal stuff uh, is, is very much different. Uh, they're all like they're usually different countries. Uh, the, it's, you, luckily, it's mostly English, so that's, that's good. But the wording is different, and uh, 
for, for instance, uh, there's some stuff with insurance. Some federations uh, require to uh, to have an insurance. As a service provider, you should also uh, register your endpoint in a federation, and the way to do that uh, is also very, very different, and it can vary from like manually typing of all kinds of URLs in a web form, uh, with the uh, obvious uh, uh, chance of uh, making typos, which I already did. So, it's yeah, it's I me. Mean, you can easily make a typo, and it can be non-important, uh, such as the name of the institute. But uh, I made a typo in the entity ID, which is <laughs> sort of uh, <laughs> critical. Um, yeah, some allow you just point a URL to XML metadata. That's of course more convenient if if you run simple SAML, that URL is by default enabled, so it's just copy paste. Uh, more advanced is uh, tools like Janus, the, the Danish tools, and yeah, I've used that and it's 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 really well designed and it's sort of a standard tool. And I would be happy if more federations use those sort of standard tools because yeah, I know the NREN community is a little bit vulnerable to uh, wheel reinvention. So <laughs> um, yeah, then there's the the ever uh, returning story of the attributes that are released. Yeah, that's, this decides if your IDP works or not. So, uh, all the IDPs in a federation, well, like, do they all work by default? That's really important. And if it doesn't, what do you need to do to, be, to make it work? Um, yeah, some cases it meant like, yeah, there's metadata, you can use that. But then it still doesn't work. You still need to contact every IDP. So what's the use of this federation then? So, and then even, even if you w want to contact an uh, identity provider, so we have the servers. And for, I think for this year, we had uh, an actual user trying to submit a paper for our conference. He was part of an institution which was part of a federation. So all the bits were there. And I asked this uh, a university admin, hey, we have a user who wants to use this. And they said, well, yeah, we don't see any reason why we would. So yeah, everything is in place. Everyone wants it, except then one administrator. I mean, uh, how much uh, arguments will you need to, uh, to make it happen? I mean, you should realize that the more difficult this, wor this, this gets, people are in the beginning, people already have the choice to go to Google, eh? and that just works. So the more difficult you make your federation, the more people go to the easy way out. Um, yeah, in a single federation, there's like you have a notion of what a user identifies. Um, in, in for a surf federatie, it's at your person principal name. Other federations use a targeted ID. But it's not the same within federations. So, how do you decide which one to use? Um, we this this is organically grown. We use a list, well, basically a list of those two. Targeted ID is is first. If we see that coming in, we'll use that. And if that's not there, we'll see if the principal name is there. So we need one of those two. Uh, that works really well up until now. Only there's a real there's a there's a corner case where people where federations supply uh, or IDPs supply uh, at your person principal name and then decide to supply later a targeted ID which they preference then so then accounts will break. Um, then there's another sort of yeah it's a difficult to spot problem because you had this list of identity providers that you use first. And then you join federations and more federations and add you gain. So uh, IDPs are coming in from one way or another way. I mean, they all work, but it just the metadata gets just overwritten. And if it was the same, there wouldn't be a problem. But the thing is that it does. It's not the same. I mean, the, all the URLs are the same, so it it will actually work. But the thing that is different is the uh, like the user interface stuff, like the name of an institute or. And yeah, it's really weird to be once they, today you see your institute mentioned uh, under this name and uh, next week it just suddenly called differently, but it still works. I mean, that's really 
good to confuse users. Um, yeah, I remember when setting this up, we were really uh, 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 worried that with federations, yeah, a lot of people don't have an account, and are we going to up set up our own guest uh, identity provider? But this is totally not the case. It's actually the opposite. People have way too many options, and they have it all. No, that's actually one of the that's the biggest problem now because people l register for uh, for the conference with their LinkedIn, and then like three weeks later they come back and they see, uh, click oh Google. Oh, oh shit, I don't have the uh, right permissions anymore. Then we have to manually swap identities again. This will be fixed by the uh, uh, account linking module, which I already promised last year, I think. But um, yeah, it's, it's very similar to the Logins for Life uh, project from uh, Kent University. Well, basically, you log in with one IDP, and then you get uh, the choice, hey, when you want to do it again, like with another, and then they're all linked. and that way, it doesn't matter how you log in. You will always be the same user to the services. Um, yeah, this is well, it's, it's a complaint, but it's also yeah, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a sign that things work because you start out with testing stuff, and then later on, it becomes production, and then the entity IDs have changed. So it's really in flux. Uh, if what works last year is might not happen, uh, it might not work this year. Uh, this is a thing I encountered, well, well, I don't encounter it, but mm, some of you have encountered it. If things don't work, like Thijs explained, that users don't, they don't understand what an NREN is, what this is. I mean, they're just redirecting pages and then all of a sudden, boom, this is huge stack them with some uh, weird error. Yeah, and then uh, what do you know? It, you do, people don't know what to do. There might be some sort of useful error, but it's only for admins. So, yeah, it, it's you. I, I looked at it and I can see what's wrong, but yeah, that, that's not something for end users. Um, I understand from the, the in common people that the there is something called a federated error handling. And that sort of makes sure that if you log in and there is an error, that you get a useful error with actually contact details that that are useful to users, say, instead of stack dumps. Um, that's not uh, that's not in simple sum on PHP yet. And I think, it, as usual, if you're sort of the first one that wants it and it's not there and it's open source, that means that you basically have to write it yourself. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's this little issue with uh, the money. Yeah, some some are for free and some are they cost money only if it's a couple of thousand per year. If you're a really small service provider, I mean, Terena has I mean, Terena is small, but I can imagine even smaller uh, SPs. Then this becomes an obstacle. Uh, this is an interesting effect. If you're not in any federation and you know, people are a bit reluctant to to. To, to have you in their federation, but once you join more federations, then there's the effect that if you're a federation and you, you're not in there, but all of a sudden all your neighbors start popping up on that page, you feel sort of left out. So then you ask, yeah, can you join our federation? That's, that's also very nice. Um, and this was, yeah, this was the end. So any questions? <laughs> Ken. Um, that's a question and a comment. Um, we really appreciate Sorry, I don't, I don't think the mic I mean, works. Keep Is it now? Yeah, yeah that worked. Um, we really appreciate you early adopters. We really appreciate the pain you go through. Um, it will get easier. I, I can only offer as reference, since I'm so old, that when we were first bringing people onto the internet, they had to type in their address. They had to type in their subnet mask. They had to worry that their battery life on their machine would last while they were typing in all those numbers. And maybe they would get on it. So it gets easier. Um, not maybe fast enough, but thank you for your pain. Yeah.
Yeah, I mean, it's rewarding because you can really see progress, and if you bang on the right door, something gets done, so it, it's good. Uh, speaking of progress, um, <laughs> <laughs> you added uh, uh, Edugain uh, IDPs, I saw. Um, why did you leave your non-Edugain IDPs, the, the same IDPs actually, in the list? Um, because, um, as you note yourself, that causes all kinds of additional problems for your SP. What do you mean by non-Edugain IDPs? In no, sorry, uh, well, let's assume that the SurfNet IDP uh, is both in Edugain as well as in Surf Federati. Why don't you kick SurfNet IDP from the Surf Federati list so that we can only choose the IDP coming in via the Edugain route? Yeah, I don't know how to decide that because it comes in via two ways and I just have to guess which one you like to be categorized under. But yeah, it's a bit tricky because it is displayed under in various places, but it's actually this. It looks like it's different metadata, like it could be different, but it's actually not. It's the same piece of metadata. It's just displayed in various locations. But if you uh, if you want it to be dif uh, displayed in uh, different locations, just let me know and I'll, I'll <laughs> configure that manually. No, well, the, the point I was more wanting to make is um, if you. Uh, b but apparently you auto-load just all metadata you can get your hands on, if, uh, so yeah. to say. Um, so we better probably need better filters there or something like that to make sure that there is only one. I mean, the entity ID should ultimately be unique, otherwise yeah. it will not work at all. So. Yeah, I mean, it, that will work, but it just depends on who created the metadata. I mean, if, if, the, if the entity ID is different, then it, of course, won't work. But you can still add different contact, uh, different... Uh, technical contacts, different uh, 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 organization strings, and yeah, that's something we have to figure out. Why don't you just tell all the uh, guys, uh, as soon as you're in Edugain, I will not accept your metadata from your normal federation anymore. Seems like a very reasonable thing to me. That seems reasonable, and it's also good to push Edugain, so yeah. That's something to consider. Sounds good. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I would start with a comment that uh, if, uh, well, depends probably what you really like, but something like Disco Juice would probably spare you all the trouble of guessing where to find your uh, IDP. It would just put you on, on one list. But actually, my question is uh, about uh, TCS. Uh, well, first of all, I, uh, as uh, the Edugain operator, I don't see uh, TCS on the uh, Edugain metadata list, which sort of might, I mean, it, it could be w one of these important killer applications, maybe, that would be ex uh, that we were worried about not being in Edugain. So that would be nice to, to, to have it there. And uh, the other question is, uh, how do you join uh, the, the portal if, uh, we, in Poland, we are running our our separate portal, uh, but uh, perhaps we w would w want to join yours. I is there a formal procedure, or is there any payment involved or something? Uh, Thank you. Uh, does this uh, yes, it works. Um, to get to the last question, uh, to join the portal, uh, you uh, yeah basically you have to contact uh, Torena Kevin uh, Mano. And he, uh, yeah, there's a fee involved because it, it obviously costs money, but uh, it is said that running your own portal is more expensive. That depends on how uh, expensive your uh, employees are because mostly it's the time, uh, the, the software is free. Uh, but yeah, you have to run it, you have to set it up and run it. And so there's a shared effort and you pay something, but it's said, well, they say it's less. That's of course for you to decide. Uh, the price uh, differs per and uh, size, I guess. So uh, you'll have to talk with Kevin uh, about that. Uh, so, but in that sense, it's easy to, easy to join as long as long as soon as I get your federation uh, to work. Uh, so, in that sense, it just works. Um, uh, for the first question, I'm not sure uh, what what would I gain from uh, using Edugain. Uh, uh, and uh, for the f well, y y you would just have all. Uh, 
federations seeing your metadata. And uh, I don't yep. know whether you join every, but I mean, the, the, the normal way would be you would have to join each p particular federation, which you probably don't, but you, you go into direct uh, uh, contact, but that's sort of breaking the, the entire picture, isn't it? I mean, the, the, yeah. the way you do federation. Yeah, and of course we yeah we need to explicitly offer well we explicit, there are explicit contracts of course with each NREN before the service can be used. Um, uh, just publishing our metadata to other uh, to all federations is not useful per se. I think. Um, it, doesn't hurt it doesn't hurt, I guess. But uh, yeah, uh, I'd like to make a comment. Um, okay. Around noon today, we received um, a request. I work for Sur Federatie. Uh, and we've received a request to include uh, the TCS personal portals in uh, EduGame. So well, we can, we're yeah. about to find out what the uh, advantages <laughs> well, yeah, are. Yeah, we'll have to see that. Yeah. yeah, and your very first question, uh, uh, the wave we use now, the uh, disco, disco power, that, that is stretched to its limits now. And uh, I think we will use disco choose very soon. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, I